Welcome to the Conversations That Matter podcast. My name is John Harris. This is a short little episode. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about Living Out. Living Out's uh, supposed to be an evangelical organization. Um, they have a church audit that is supposed to help make your church safe, welcoming for LGBTQ plus folks. Uh, Tim Keller has worked with them. Sal Mar- Albury worked with them. I think he was one of the founders. Um, there's been controversy with Living Out over the years, and uh, and, and, and each time it seems like Living Out, uh, they they just they give little hints of who they actually are. Like like the you know Tom Buck had done this whole thing with them years ago. Uh, I want to say two years ago now, where he basically did some some he he had a stealth operation, this little sting operation where. I guess someone had posed, if I'm not, if my memory serves me uh, correctly, as an underage uh, male and was trying to kind of get rid of same-sex attraction. And they were, he was given advice like to go to gay bars and things like that in a non-sexual way, have friends, uh, but but go to the gay bar to make friends. It, it, weird stuff like that. <laughs> Living out's done weird stuff like that. Now. This is just another example in my mind of kind of like showing their true colors again. Um, I, I think I pointed out a month ago they had rebranded as gay and Christian, and now um, they retweeted something. And, but the thing they retweeted, you have to understand this whole controversy in the um, the North. Uh, let's see if I get this right. I don't want to. There's there's all sorts of different denominations. I want to pronounce this correctly. Yes, the Anglican Church in North America. That's what it is. Not the Episcopalians. The Anglican Church in North America. So you have to understand this whole controversy that is existing and has existed since I guess January in the Anglican Church in North America to understand uh, what living out, how living out is kind of showing its true colors again in a retweet that they made. So I'm going to take you through. Um, what's going on in the Anglican Church in North America. They they put out a statement on sexuality and identity, a pastoral statement from the College of Bishops, and it's pretty long. Instead of, you know, just, I don't know, maybe I'm too simple. You know, Scripture says homosexuality is wrong. Mortify it. Um, it's it's just a very long statement uh, about how, uh, well, I'll read you with this, this excerpt here. Um, the bishops of the Anglican Church in North America offer this pastoral statement to the church after prayer, study, careful listening to disparate voices. That, that's very important, I guess. Careful, that careful listening to disparate voices right now. It's not the Bible. The, the, anyway, um, does the standpoint epistemology come in here? It sounds like it might be. Anyway, and a collaborative process involving con- contributions from across the province, we understand that our youth and adults need language to share about their experience. Hmm, so that's, the, the, is the Bible sufficient? Does the Bible not give us language to share about our sins? Um, they don't even call it sin, it's about their experience. So what what are they getting at here? Anyway, as reflected in this statement, we commend the usage of Christians who experience same-sex attraction. And this is the, the brunt of it. You know, instead of using gay Christian or same-sex attracted Christian or something, the, or, the word order is important to them. Christians who experience same-sex attraction. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Christians who just really want to commit adultery. Christians who just want to murder someone, Christians who just want to disobey their parent. I mean, pick your sin. Um, would, would you have a statement that, and this is a long one, by the way, it just concludes with this, that, that, about any other sin? No, you, you probably wouldn't. The Bible's pretty clear and you have biblical language, but it's because of the, the cultural moment we're in and because th- these are accepted, and not only accepted, but celebrated sins, that now churches have to rethink all of a sudden all of these things. And so they're, they're rethinking this and... Um, and so, and, and and I will say, you know, some of the things in there are not altogether bad. It's just their starting point isn't great. Um, you, you know, if you're a Christian who experiences some of these things, it's not part of your identity as a Christian. And all Christians uh, experience inclinations towards certain sins at certain times. So, but but to why why the um, why, why all the nuanced kind of hand wringing and um, and, and why this this need all of a sudden to go, you know, to have this extra biblical language and stuff. That's really, in my opinion, that's really where more of the issue is. But I digress to show you kind of where this, how this controversy has evolved. So the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion, um, responded. And I'm not going to read you their whole response, but ultimately, um, I'll re- here's a few just 
uh, interesting things they say. These decisions by the ACNA, uh, Anglican Church in North America, uh, is, is tantamount to a subtle, subtle capitulation to recognize and promote same-sex attraction, or relations, sorry, among its members, exactly the same route of argument adopted by the Episcopal Church. Uh, and so they're saying that, you know, basically they, they see a Trojan horse here. Um, a gay is a gay. They cannot be rightly described otherwise. In the same vein, we cannot describe people as a Christian murderer, Christian adulterer, and Christian terrorist. So, so they're calling it out. They're saying you, you can change the word order all you want. Instead of, you know, a Christian, a gay Christian, instead of, you know, a Christian who experienced same-sex attraction, he's saying, okay, change the word order. Does it still make sense to say I'm a Christian murderer or a Christian terrorist or a Christian? No. Um, so, so whatever sin you want to put in there, you could certainly put in there. But they say that neither should we have gay Christian or gay Anglican uh, without holiness. No man can see God. Um, and they, they say that this is going to be taken advantage of. This is, they're, they're being used by um, the uh, LGBTQ plus lobby, etc. That's, that's their reaction from the Church of Nigeria. So uh, Andrew Godard, if I'm pronouncing that right, or Godard, uh, who is a assistant minister at the St. James, uh, the less Pimlico tutor in Christian ethics at Westminster Theological uh, and Center, I guess, and the adjunct assistant professor of Anglican studies at Fuller Theological Seminary. I guess that's traditionally Fuller has been the, an evangelical seminary, uh, seminary, not anymore. But here's a professor from Fuller, Andrew Goddard. And this is what he says. The message that comes across is that the church objects, and I should preface this, he's reacting to what, not what the Nigerians said. In this section, he's reacting to what the Anglicans in North America said. This message that comes across is that the church objects to them describing themselves as gay Christians. This then gives fuel to those, whether traditional Christians or non-Christians, who identify as LGBT, who argue you cannot be gay and a Christian. It is also likely to lead to an increase in the sense of shame and being second class or worse, simply because of the pattern of one's attractions. It looks horribly like an attempt effectively to silence the voices of anyone who experiences same-sex attraction and who wishes to speak in their own way about their own experience. It's pretty postmodern. And you know, God, God speaks about our experiences, by the way, in, in, in his word. But um, And own understanding of who they are in Christ and who wishes to try to help those without that experience to understand them better. So, so he's taking issue with, he's saying the, the, the statement by the Anglicans in North America, that wasn't a good statement. That because they're, they're trying to say you shouldn't use the term gay Christian, etc. That, that's just, it's wrong. Well, then he reacts also to what the Nigerians said. And basically this is what he says. Quote, the word homophobic is often misused to label traditional understandings, and I normally therefore avoid it, but it is sadly the only possible word that can be used in the face of such unacceptable language. And, um, and so someone named Dr. Ian Paul had put this out there, uh, to, I guess had, had put out this statement, this response by Andrew Godard, and basically saying, how does our language reflect the gospel, you know? And then Wesley Hill, um, I know it's getting confusing with all these names. Wesley Hill, though, um, who, it, this is who Living Out retweeted, um, put out this quote. So here's the significant part. Living Out retweets Wesley Hill. They retweet the quote I just read for you about the Nigerian letter. And, and this raises some things. Uh, and this is why I wanted to just briefly talk about it with you all. Living Out is placing themselves squarely against what the Nigerian church uh, has said, the statement from the Nigerian church about what the Anglicans in North America are doing. And so they're, they're against that, and they're, they're willing to put their stamp of approval on uh, somehow the idea that that's homophobic uh, and that that's wrong. So they're using these, these sociological, the sociological word homophobic, it's one of the problems. We're not using any biblical language in any of this. You know, they're using the sociological term. And, um, and, and, and that they're saying it's unacceptable language. And, and w that puts them in the category of at least um, being against uh, a Nigerian group of Christians. Now, I, I, this is the interesting thing. This whole thing to me, the Methodists have this, the Anglicans are having this. The, those in Africa are more conservative on this issue than those in the United States or in the Western world, uh, Europe, etc. And 
it's for some reason it's not colonialism it's not racism against people in africa who have these beliefs uh to impose these beliefs or if they critique it it's not racist to uh, oppose them and say that their language is unacceptable etc even though they're they're black they're in africa and they they would be you'd think on the intersectional scale they they would be you know somewhere somewhere you know lower you know they're they're kind of uh they're they're oppressed they're they're colonized but not not so for this movement and it just it points out one of the issues with the social justice movement why it's in, it's inherently confusing and it's inherently contradictory because the the christians in nigeria lose their status their victim status if they ever had it once they want to oppose the lgbtq etc lobby um and, and i think their statement kind of makes sense they're just they're they're kind of like why, why try to walk this tightrope? Just use the, the biblical language. Use what the Bible says. The Bible's given us instructions on this. Homosexuality is wrong. We don't use it as a descriptor. And if you're a Christian, don't don't call. I would say don't even call yourself that. A Christian who experienced same sex attraction. You may be a Christian who does sometimes experience same sex attraction. But why 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 use that? Why even say, I'm a Christian? That's it. You're a Christian. You you struggle with sin like other Christians, but that you're you're that's not your identity in Christ. You're supposed to be focusing on your identity, who you are, and you're not that anymore. Such were some of you. So, um, so you fight it, you mortify it. Um, but this, this, this struggle to somehow try to come up with this way to appease the world or try to recognize and give language for people to understand these experiences without calling them sin and so forth. It's just getting outside of, of what the Bible teaches on this subject. And I think the Nigerian Christians are, they're onto something with this, but now, but then they're, they're called these, these nasty names. They're called homophobic, uh, called unacceptable. And somehow this is acceptable to living out. And this is acceptable to at least one professor at Fuller Theological Seminary. And, um, think about it. If it was another issue, not homosexuality, but something else it, you know, that we're, we're, I don't, I'm trying to think of one now and I'm having a hard time, but we're, we're against the Nigerian church for something else. You know, we don't like the way that, I don't know, they dance around on Sunday morning during the service and it's just not pro proper. It's, you know, uh, it's unacceptable or something. I mean, you'd be a racist in two seconds, but not on this issue. On this issue, uh, it trumps racism. And that's why I think it's not going to be I think I, I could be wrong, but I think the next issue isn't going to be Black Lives Matter. I think the wheel's going to turn, and and it's going to be the transgender and more of the LGBTQ plus stuff. And I don't see how the church is going to survive it if, if these are the kinds of controversies. You, you have to be solid and firm and stand by biblical language and not start experimenting with what, what can you do to sort of still be orthodox but still affirm. You're going to be stretched so tight, you're just not going to be able to survive. So... I uh, just wanted you to be aware of that. I thought it was um, a, an interesting example, um, and um, so hopefully, hopefully that helps.